Good morning dear students. Today I am going to begin with the poem Sonnet 3. This poem Sonnet 3 is written by William Shakespeare. This is the image of the poet William Shakespeare. Now let me tell you about this poet in brief. William Shakespeare was born at Stratford-upon-Avon, England. He is a renowned English dramatist, poet and actor. William Shakespeare is called England's national poet and the Bard of Avon. He wrote 37 plays and 154 sonnets. Dear students, you might have read that William Shakespeare's play have been translated into many languages worldwide. So Ben Johnson has rightly said William Shakespeare was not of an age but for all time. Today we see that in each and every century William Shakespeare and his plays and poetry are prescribed in the syllabus. People read him in each and every century. So, he has earned that recognition, name and fame in the world of literature. His plays are divided into four categories. Histories, comedies, tragedies and Romances. Some of his famous plays are Hamlet, King Lear, Macbeth, Othello, The Merchant of Venice, and The Tempest. Dear student, William Shakespeare has contributed substantially to poetry. He wrote 154 sonnets, and his long poems include. Venice and Adonis and the Rape of Leocris. Dear students, today in this world his plays and poetry are a subject matter of study, reinterpretation and research. Now let me tell you about the poem Sonnet 3. The poem Sonnet 3 is addressed to a young man. In this poem, William Shakespeare reminds the young man that he is young and hence it is right time for him to think of marriage and it is also the right time Time for him to think that he should become the father of a child. He is in good health and looks handsome. So he must reproduce his own image in the form of a child. The poet further makes him realize that if he does not think of marriage now and if he does not want to become a father now, then he would disgrace the world by not following the law of nature. The law of nature that everyone is expected to follow. The poet says here, if this young man does not follow nature, then he would curse a woman who would like to be the mother of a child. In his own image, his mother sees her reflection. The same way he too can see his own image in the child in his old age. At last, the poet says and makes him aware if this young man does not think of marriage then he will die alone 
and he will not leave behind a memory of his own image. So this is how the poet talks about the young man. In his other poem, All the World is a Stage, William Shakespeare talks about the different stages that we human beings have to go. He compares the world to a stage and says that all the men and women are merely players. The word merely here is very important because the men and women are just puppets in the hands of God. They make their exit, they make their entrances as per the will of the God. So here in this poem, Sonnet 3, the poet talks about love. The poet talks about what a young man is expected to do. In his poem, All the World is a Stage, the poet talks about the stage of lover. And in that stage of lover, we see that the lover is sighing like furnace. He is burning in the agony of love. And he has written a song on the beauty of his beloved. And he is seen singing that sad song. But here in this poem, Sonnet 3, we see that the young man the poet is addressing perhaps is not ready to marry and become the father of a child. But in the earlier poem that we just talked about, All the World is a Stage, in that poem, the young man falls in love. He burns in the agony of love. But here, this man loves himself. He is engrossed in his own world of self-love, that he has no time to think of marriage, that he has no time to give a thought that he should become the father now. Let us move to the poem now. First, I am going to read the poem here. And then we shall have the discussion on the poem. Sonnet 3 by William Shakespeare Look in thy glass and tell the face thou vivest. Now is the time that face should form another, whose fresh repair if now thou not renovest, thou Dust beguile the world and bless some mother. For where is she so fair whose unerred womb disdains the tillage of thy husbandry? Or who is he so fond will be the tomb of his self love to stop posterity? Thou art thy mother's class, and she in thee calls back the lovely April of her prime. So thou through the window of thine age shall see, despite of wrinkles, this thy golden time. But if thou live, remember not to be thy single, and thine image dies with thee. In the first line of the poem, the poet tells the young man and tries to persuade him. The poet is telling the young man that he should go to the mirror and he should look at his own image. 
Now, why the poet is telling this young man to go to the mirror and look at his own image? The reason is, now is the time that we should form another. According to poet, for this young man, this is the right time to think of marriage and become a father. So this young man is good in health and he looks handsome. So what he should do? He should reproduce his own coffee. He should reproduce his own coffee in the form of a child. The poet in the third line says, Whose fresh repair, if now thou not renovest, thou dost beguile the world and bless some mother. The poet tells here to the young man, If you do not marry, and if you do not become the father of a child, what will happen? Your beauty will fade. You would no more look handsome. And you won't be able to reproduce the beauty of your image. So this is the perfect right time for the young man to think of this. He is in good health and he looks handsome. And if at this time he does not reproduce his own image in the form of a son or a daughter, then he is going to beguile the world. Beguile the world means he is going to disgrace the world by not following the law of nature. And what is the law of nature? That the men and women who take birth, they love, they marry, and they procreate children. So, by taking this decision not to marry, the poet is saying that this young man is going to unbless some mothers. He is going to unbless some mother. The meaning is this that. He is going to deprive that beautiful woman who would like to marry him and would like to become the mother of his child. For where is she so fair whose unerred womb disdains the tillage of the husbandry? The poet asks the young man, isn't there? A fair and beautiful woman who would not like to marry him, who would not like to become the mother of his child. And if she is ready to marry him, and if he is not ready to marry her, then she would disdain the tillage of his husbandry. So the poet is using a metaphor here. This language is metaphorical. Let us see how his language is metaphorical. The word tillage refers to the cultivation of the land. The farmers cultivate the land. Why? They want to sow the seeds so that the seeds will turn into plants and the plants will grow. And these farmers will then cut the crops. So here, the word unyard means unplowed, which refers to sexual intercourse. Plowing the womb and sowing it with the seed results in procreation. So the moment you cultivate the land, and then you sow the seed. After that, if you water it, what will happen? The seed will turn into a plant. So here, 
the man has all the capabilities to give a birth to a daughter or a son and if in these conditions when he is capable to give a birth to a boy or a girl and if he decides not to marry as he is engrossed in his own world of self-love then in that condition the woman who is so fair would disdain the tillage of his husbandry or who is he so fond will be the tomb of his self-love and then the poet questions this young man is there a man who is in love with himself if it is so then he will find himself in the graveyard now this is very important to note here what the poet is saying the poet is talking about posterity what is the meaning of the poster posterity here the descendants of a person so here this young man who is in love with himself who is engrossed in his self love if he decides not to marry and not to become the father of a child then he is going to discontinue the cycle of life let me tell you our parents married so we are here we are going to marry so our children will be there when our children will become young they too will marry and they will have their children this is how the cycle of life will move on from one generation to the other but here this young man who is in love with him himself the one who is engrossed in his self love in his own world if he does not marry and if he does not think of becoming a father then he is going to discontinue this cycle of life let us move to the next lines thou art thy mother's glass the poet says here you are the image of your mother you are the copy of your mother you are the replica of your mother and that is why she in the calls back the lovely april of her prime as you are her mirror as you look alike her when she looks at you she finds her own image in you and this makes her to go back to the days of her youth and remember how beautiful she was so thou through windows of thine i shall see despite the wrinkles this thy golden time the way your mother who is quite old now the way she looks at you and finds her own coffee in you finds her own image in you and remembers the lovely april that is the most golden time of her youth that is what she remembers when she looks at you similarly when you will become old when there will be wrinkles all over your body through the windows of thine age you too shall see your own image in your daughter or a son and then you would go back to the past and remember the golden time of your youth so here your children will be your replica let us see what does the poet say in the last two lines 
but if thou live remember not to me but if you live and decide not to marry if you live and decide not to become the father of a child then what will happen you will die alone and your image will die with you so you will leave nothing behind your memory will be completely erased as you are going to die all alone but if you marry and become the father of a child then you will be remembered even after your death how will you be remembered even after your death when people would look at your daughter and son they would see your image in them so this is a very beautiful poem in which the poet is appealing the young man to think of marriage if not he will die alone and the graveyard will be his ultimate destiny uh these are the meanings of some difficult words that this you can go through and these are some of the questions that you have to read at leisure and try to solve on your own so today we stop here thank you very much for listening